Joint replacements have been around for decades, but with the use of robotic technology, these are not your grandma's new joints. No, from hip to knee replacements, these technological advancements are proving themselves in the operating room and into recovery. Our Dr. Frank George is here with a closer look at the impact. Robotic surgery is nothing new. Under the direct guidance of a surgeon, their smaller hands and instruments can get into places that would be difficult to reach any other way. But a growing application of robotics lies in the reproducible precision that they bring to joint replacement. And there's growing evidence that they can reduce certain complications. 59-year-old Ross Arsenault is more than an avid runner. In Wisconsin, uh, the Ice Age uh, 50 was one of the my first ultramarathon. And then um, I've done ultramarathons in this area, but also in Switzerland, uh, the Eiger uh, 50, 51K. But suddenly, his hip became painful. The first time I felt pain was uh, like around November 2017. We were running at night, 10 miles. And I just remember at one point kicking a, a rock in the trail, and I had that first sharp pain in my hip. He saw a doctor who only found early arthritis on x-ray. So he began physical therapy and continued to run. In just two years, it became unbearable. Around Thanksgiving of 2019, and that's that was my last time. After I finished running, I, I could hardly you know stand up, walk around. In the span of two years, his hip went from looking like this to this, and he was told it needed to be replaced. Fortunately, joint replacement technology has advanced significantly significantly being available to younger, more active people. We don't consider this your grandmother's hip replacement, for example. We're dipping down into the 50s, 40s, even younger when we need to and telling patients they can get back to pretty much whatever they want to athletically. That's Dr. Jason Davis, a Henry Ford Health orthopedic surgeon. One improvement has been to the materials of the joint. Historically, the old parts got 20 years, 90 percent of the time. We were really limited by the plastic. That's been the biggest improvement in the last 20 years is the plastics really made to outlast most people. But the way the replacement is done has also taken a leap forward, particularly with the help of robotics. The way it works is we get a CT scan, create a 3D model of that patient's unique anatomy. And even before surgery, we prepare implants that fit their bone, place them in 3D on a computer exactly where we want them to fit. Then during surgery, using the robotic tool, we're very precise within a fraction of a millimeter error and within one degree when placing the implants. So it was like really quick, I guess, how that robot can, you know, get everything down and set for them. The doctor controls it all, but the robot's there for the, the steadiness. In a study done by Dr. Davis, the added precision robotics brings has also been shown to reduce the risk of a specific complication. What our study looked at was robotic hips in particular compared to manually done uh, traditional total hips. We found about a one-fourth instance of uh, dislocation, which is uh, inferring that it's essentially a protective for stability. I walked out, and within two and a half to three weeks, I was able to start riding my bike again. My thought always was, if you can do it perfect 99.9% .9 of the time, why not do that? And this type of technology really enables you to do that, in my opinion. Now, I want to point out the robotic part of this is really just an assist that aids the precision. The surgery is completely controlled and performed by the surgeon. Back to you. All right, thank you, Doc. It's not just hips that can be done with robotic assistance. There is a similar system used for knee replacement surgeries as Henry Ford.